After having watched today's video, you will know what are the different types of pilot licenses, what are they called and what are the privileges of having one of these licenses. And most importantly, I'll also tell you what are the steps and requirements to get your hands on these licenses. So if you are ready, fasten those seatbelts because we are ready for takeoff. What's up fellow aviators and welcome back to the Flytuber, flying simplified through YouTube. My name is Ali Asghar and on this channel, I talk about interesting aviation facts and aircraft knowledge. So if you are an aviation enthusiast and are interested to know more about aircraft and flying, consider subscribing. Why do you need a license in the first place? Just like the case of road vehicles, even if you own one, you still need a license from the authorities stating them that you know how to drive and you are safe on road for your safety and for the safety of other people. Same is the case with being a pilot. You still need a flying license from the authorities for similar reasons for your safety, for the safety of other people and other aircraft flying and for the safety of people on ground. And even if you are flying for an airline, you are flying with passengers behind. So you need a flying license. Even if you own one aircraft, you need a flying license to fly your own aircraft. With that out of the way, let's talk about these licenses and I'll be mentioning them in a progressive manner. That is, each license will be of a higher standard than the previous one. And I'll be just mentioning some brief points and I'll not get into much details to keep the video short. So let's jump into it. So first up on the list is your SPL or your student pilot's license. Now as the name suggests, this is the license you get to start your flying training. Think of it to be like a learner's license which you get before your actual driver's license. Now with this license, you can pretty much start your training. You can fly solo training flights if you are released for your first solo. And you can also fly at night with the instructor or without him if you have passed the night solo check. And the limitations here is that you cannot carry any passengers in your aircraft and you can't fly for remuneration that is you can't get paid for flying uh, for example you can't carry any cargo or mail etc neither can you get paid for your services now how do you get an spl uh, the requirements are comparatively pretty simple you just have to be at least 16 years of age and have must have passed your class 10th uh, with these you also have to pass your class 2 medical which is a lower standard of medical examination i'll put the link of all the uh, DGCA class 2 certified medical doctors in the description below. You can go to the link and contact a doctor available in your city. Now you take all these papers to a flight school and the chief flight instructor and the chief ground instructor both of them will take an oral examination from basics of aviation and once you have passed that oral examination you submit all these papers to DGCA and you will get your student pilot's license. Now the next higher category of license is a PPL or a private pilot's license. This license is required if you want to fly as a hobby or fly in your spare time um, you can fly solo on any aircraft that is endorsed on your PPL you can fly at night you can fly in IMC that is instrument meteorological conditions that is low visibility uh, if your instrument rating is endorsed now what an instrument rating or an IR is I'll tell you in a moment and also you can pretty much continue your training towards the next higher category of license which is a CPL I'll tell you about it in a minute and the limitations are pretty much similar to an SPL you can't carry passengers you can't fly to get paid etc the only difference between an SPL and a CPL is that you can fly solo even if it's not a training flight. The requirements to get a PPL are you need to be 17 years of age, you need to have an SPL and all its requirements which includes a class 2 medical assessment. You also need to have an FRTOL, I'll talk about it in a minute. You also have to pass the theory examinations on PPL and after that you will fly for 40 hours at least of which 20 hours need to be solo time. Uh, you will fly in the day, you will fly at night and once the flying is done you will give flight checks. You need to pass these checks and if you need an IR endorsement you have to pass your IR checks as well. And once all this is completed you just make a bunch of all these documents send it to DGCA and you will get your PPL license. And the next up and the most important type of license is a CPL or a commercial pilot's license as the name suggests with this license you can fly commercially and for remuneration that is you can get paid for flying once you have a cpl a whole lot of opportunities open up like you can become a flight instructor you can apply in airline vacancies you can fly for charter you can fly for freelance or you can fly for crop dusting or even skydiving pilots and many more and because of all these 
this license is a very sought after and a very desired license in a pilot's career and it also is a very difficult license to get and why is it difficult let's look at the requirements to get a cpl the requirements to get a cpl is you need to be 18 years of age on the date of application you need to have an spl or a ppl Although in foreign countries you need a PPL to apply for CPL but here in India either of them will do. You also need a class 1 medical certificate which is the highest standard of medical assessment. On top of that you also need an FRTOL and an RTR. I'll talk about them in a minute. And then you need to pass 5 DGCA examinations which are very tough. When compared to other countries, India is one of the countries which has very difficult theory papers. After passing these papers, you need to fly 200 hours of flying time of which 100 hours at least should be solo and there are many other sub requirements i'll talk about that in more detail in my very soon and upcoming videos so stay tuned to the channel there are many more privileges and opportunities of having a cpl and very few limitations like you cannot be a commander of a jet aircraft uh, for which you need the next category of license which is an ATPL. So now moving on to the ultimate category of flying license which is an ATPL or an airline transport pilot's license. In the US you need an ATPL to fly for the airline that's why it is named so but here in India and in European countries you can fly for an airline even with a CPL but ultimately you will need an ATPL to become a captain on these bigger jet aircrafts. Also having an ATPL is a requirement to become a trainer and an examiner on these aircrafts or to become a CFI in the flight school. Like I said this is the highest category of pilot license and to get this you need a lot of experience and an in-depth theory knowledge. Uh, let's look at the requirements of having an ATPL. You need to be 21 years of age on the date of application of ATPL and you also need to have an SPL and all its requirements like an FRTOL, RTR, class 1 medical certificate etc. You then need to pass 3 DGCA ATPL written examinations and then give and pass 2 oral examinations which are very difficult to clear. Uh, believe me, I myself have given this and cleared these uh, papers and oral examinations and they were pretty tough. And apart from all this, you need a flying experience of at least 1500 hours total of which 500 hours minimum should be a PIC, 100 hours in night, 100 hours instrument flying and there are many more sub requirements of uh, flight times etc. I'll probably make a separate video on all these requirements of having an ATPL. These are the four main types and categories of pilot licenses. Apart from these, there are certain other types of licenses and ratings. You can think of them as an add-on on these main type of licenses. Uh, so let's talk about them quickly. First up is a TR or a type rating. The above licenses prove that you know how to fly and the rules etc. But it doesn't mean that you can fly any and every aircraft out there. As every aircraft has its separate cockpit layout and operating procedures. Therefore, you need to train and pass checks on particular type of aircraft which will then be endorsed on your CPL and then you can fly that type of aircraft. So an Airbus A320 type rated pilot cannot fly a Boeing 737 or an Airbus A380 for example. Next up is a medical assessment. You are assessed at least once every year for your medical fitness to make sure that you don't have any health issues. There are two classes of medical assessments. First up is a class 2 medical assessment which is a smaller category of medical assessment. Next is a class 1 medical assessment which is a higher category and a higher standard which has many more number of testing and much more strict testing done. Uh, and the first time you get your class 1 medical it is done at an air force station by air force doctors and then the subsequent class 1 medicals every year can be done by a class 1 approved medical doctor. I'll put the link to the class 1 authorized uh, medical doctors down in the description below. You can check that out. Moreover, on every 25th, 30th, 35th, 40th, etc. All these ages, you need to get your class 1 medical done only from the Air Force station. And finally, after 40 years of age, the same class 1 medical will have to be done at least every 6 months. Next up is an RTRA or a Radio Telephony Restricted License which is issued by WPC or Wireless Planning and Coordination which is a government body. You get this license after passing an examination by WPC uh, which assesses you for your abilities to understand and communicate in radio telephony language. So next up is an FRTOL or a Flight Radio Telephony Operator's License. On the basis of your RTR which is specified above, the DGCA issues you with an FRTOL stating that you now know and are authorized to use and operate the flight radio that is radios in aviation. And the next one is an IR or an instrument rating. Consider it to be like an add-on on your license which allows you to fly in IMC or low visibility conditions. Uh, basically you can fly without having the need to look outside the aircraft and you can fly solely relying on your aircraft instruments. 
to get an ir you need to complete your ir training and pass the instrument rating check right and the last one in my list is a multi engine rating now as the name suggests this is an add on which allows you to fly aircraft with more than one engines you just need to uh, do the training and pass the examinations on a particular multi engine aircraft that you want to fly and that aircraft will be endorsed on your license since the video is becoming too long this is where i am closing my list although there are certain other types of licenses and ratings which i am not mentioning here if you know one which i missed do comment in the section below question of the day which one of the above licenses or ratings are you interested to know more detailed information about and i'll probably make a video on that very soon well that's it for this video guys i hope that you are finding value and information out of this video and out of this channel if you do like the content on this channel hit that thumbs up button and do share the channel and video with your friends and also subscribe to the channel if you haven't already done so i'll see you in the next and very very important one very important video coming up so see you in the next one happy landings till then